Melbourne's commuter chaos as we reveal more flaws in the system. The security breach exposing Brumby government plans. Police launch a major blitz in Melbourne's west. And new concerns over Etihad Stadium's troubled surface. Good evening. It's been a day of chaos on Melbourne's rail network with hundreds of thousands of commuters caught up in the meltdown. It was triggered by a massive early morning power cut after a train brought down power lines near Southern Cross Station. Almost every rail service in the state was affected, causing widespread cancellations and long delays, with operator Metro now facing a million dollar fine. And tonight, commuters brave enough or, without an alternative, are making their way home. Andrea Edwards has been covering the day's events. Andrea, there are no guarantees this won't happen all over again. That's right, Peter, but for tonight, at least, it looks like everything is back on track. And for frustrated commuters, there will be some compensation. The government announcing it will share with Metro the million-dollar cost of a free day of travel on Friday. This was the commuter chaos caused by the blackout. And you will be crushed by the doors. Stand clear. The train cannot take any more passengers. Absolutely full. Missed four trains at Noble Park. Couldn't get on board any of them. Totally packed. The turmoil was triggered just before 5am when a wire snapped and became tangled in a train's pantograph, not far from Southern Cross Station, cutting overhead power supplies. Almost every service was affected as other trains were diverted and delayed. Wow. Seven o'clock trains cancelled, 20 past, no buses, no trains. The worst affected lines were Craggyburn, Upfield, Sydenham, Williamstown and Werribee. Well, it's going to make me late for work. OK, Connick's had its own problems, but I would say it was much better. Power was partly restored just before 7am for some trains in the city loop, but the delays continued for hours. We've had about five messages that are unclear, so and there's going to be about three platforms full of people, three train loads full of people, to get into town. While people queued on suburban platforms, Southern Cross Station was like a ghost town, with passengers left confused and angry. I'm really frustrated and annoyed with this. Not a lot, just that the trains aren't going to be running. Finished at six this morning, got in here and yeah, nothing. The Premier wasn't affected, he travels in style, but he says Metro can do better. I think everybody did their best to get information um, out there, but I think there's always room to improve communications. Metro boss Andrew Lazala apologised for the chaos. Thousands of people were affected. We move 400,000 people a day and so you know, most people will have had a disrupted journey today, which is why we're extremely sorry. Yarra Trams scheduled extra services to cope with the backlog. Buses were brought in to deal with the thousands of stranded passengers. This morning's circumstance is uh, not acceptable and certainly not desirable. By early afternoon, most services had returned to normal, with Metro still in the process of replacing critical overhead wires. There's no guarantee it won't happen again. We are trying to prioritise all the high-risk areas so that we can avoid as many failures as possible, and, and we are, but we are playing catch-up to an extent. The opposition says it's warned the government about the problems. Today's chaos is a direct consequence of John Brumby's failure as both Treasurer and as Premier to invest in our public transport system. Earlier this month, the Transport Minister withheld $4 million owed to Metro. Today, he offered commuters a sweetener. This Friday, um, travel on the Metropolitan Public Transport Network will be free. Andrea Edwards, 7 News. The commuters affected by today's turmoil are caught in the middle of a massive blame game involving politicians, Metro and the experts. Most agree the system's out of date and in need of a huge upgrade, but no one wants to take responsibility. Paul Mees is one of the country's leading transport experts. Inspecting Victoria's infrastructure with Seven News, he couldn't believe the state of disrepair. Signalling cables left exposed and sleepers that should have been replaced years ago. This one here, as you can see, is falling apart before our eyes. He says this morning's problem is easily preventable and should have been picked up in routine maintenance. There should be people out there every day inspecting all the critical components of the system to make sure that nothing's going to fail in service. He disagrees with Metro that the problem is in the age of the system. He says proactive maintenance is a much cheaper, more effective solution. 
Metro, even more than Connex, seem to have the disease of saying, give us more money. But the opposition insists it is a funding issue. It says the government knew overhead lines in the area needed repair. The problem was identified in Metro's tender document last year. Now, I would have thought, as a matter of priority, that work would have been undertaken. Breakdown maintenance is what this government are doing. Whether the fault lies with Metro or the government, this morning's chaos shows just how vulnerable the current system is. Critics say one small piece of infrastructure should not be able to leave 400,000 people stranded. It's the equivalent to closing down every city freeway and, and then some. User groups want a public transport authority set up to oversee the system. Even if they're not doing the day-to-day -day running, they should be taking responsibility, making sure that the infrastructure is up to scratch. Laurel Irving, 7 News.